All right, folks, welcome back. I figured I'd do this video since I've been making um, some progress on um, Aliens Isolation in VR. And I figured I might as well help those of you out that happen to be using an HTC Vive um, Nolo VR or specifically a combination of Nolo VR and PSVR to play the game. Um, now, there are a lot of issues in the game in terms of getting it up and running with VR, so there are quite a few steps. And I figured I'd walk you guys through it while it's still pretty fresh in my mind. So one of the first things you're going to need to do is you're going to need to go to Google and look up Alien Isolation VR mod. Um, basically, you need to go to this first link here, which is releases, um, debray slash mother VR, mother obviously being the reference to the AI in the game. What you're going to do then is you're going to download this file. Now, in my case, I already have the file downloaded, so I'm not going to do that. Basically, you're going to need to be, you know, essentially open up the zip file. So get WinZip or 7-Zip or something to that, um, you know, to that degree. What you're going to do next is you're going to go to your computer. And I have pretty full drives right now. You're going to locate wherever Aliens is installed. In my case, it's on C, Steam Library. I'm going to click there. I'm going to go to Steam Apps. Uh, from Steam Apps, I'm going to go to Common, Alien Isolation. And what you're going to do is, from the file that you just downloaded from the zip file, you're going to copy this dxgi.dll and openvr um, underscore api.dll. Um, these will basically allow you to get everything up and running correctly. Um, this is also what essentially overrides the default um, VR settings from um, the original Oculus DK1 examples that they had, in, and basically you know sends those calls towards um, the more modern applications. Now you're not quite done there. We're going to need to get revived for those of us who don't have it installed yet. Now you may um, have to search for it for a little while, but typically you just need to go to this GitHub link over here. You'll scroll down, um, and then they have you know this click to download the latest revive installer. So you're going to go ahead and download this thing. Um, occasionally, you know, you may have issues running revive. But in general, I found that what you need to do after doing this step is going to program files, not program file 64, because it is, in fact, a 64-bit application. And what you want to do is you want to go ahead and launch the revive overlay. This will essentially allow it to nest itself into Steam VR. Um, this will then, by you know extension, allow you to also patch the alien isolation um, exe file so that it is actually playable um, from the revive wrapper that runs within the Steam VR library. Now, once you got that all set up, you're not quite done yet. So what you'll need to do now is you're going to need to actually go ahead and open your Trinus application. So in my case, I'm going to search for Trinus PSVR. We're going to get this thing launched. You want to keep your PSVR on a stable surface. And at this point, if you have the Nolo VR like I do, what you're going to want to do is power up your base station, which is that really big, round, bulky thing. You're going to wait for that to turn on, and then you're going to do the same thing on your little head marker, which is attached to your PSVR. Um, that way you can actually have Nolo up and running. And of course, remember that you want to set your RGB to 444 um, in your display settings if you have an AMD GPU. Otherwise, you will not have an output on your screen. So once you get that going, you're going to head, hit Start here. That'll start the application. So now, as you can see, you're up and running. And everything's basically good to go. So this is all fine and dandy. As you can see, now my PSVR is running. So good time to go back into Revive and launch the Revive overlay. As you can see now, it's uh, it's up and running, and you can also see that it happens to be um, within the uh, overlay that's going to be running the actual game for us. But we're not done yet. There's still yet another step to do here. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go down here, and I'm going to right-click on Revive Dashboard, and I'm going to say Inject. This is the part that I was telling you guys about earlier, where we're going to actually inject the Aliens um, EXE. So what you're going to go ahead and do is you're going to go to your Steam library, wherever Aliens is installed. You're going to click on the executable, and you're going to say open. Now, in my case, since I already did it, I'm not going to do that. And so my part of this step is actually done at this point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to alt-tab out of this because I have no longer any need for being in there, and I'm going to close it down.
since I am no longer running that. So I'm going to go ahead and do this. Now, you might think that you're done at this point as well. However, that's not actually the case. I found that my keyboard decides to really not like to work in Alien Isolation whenever I'm running it in VR. So at this point, what I found around is a workaround is you basically have to go into big picture mode. So you go into big picture mode, you launch this thing, um, you wait for this for a little while. Um, at this point, you're going to want to use your Xbox 360 or Xbox One controller. Um, as you can see, mine just popped up right there as I turned it on. You're going to go into big picture mode and go into controller settings. And you want to enable these right here. So guide button focuses Steam and Xbox configuration support is enabled. Um, as you can see, it's detecting my controllers. Um, it's detecting two of them because there's actually one that was already tied um, to my little dongle previously. And so that's why you can see it in here. So that's the step with big picture mode. Now you can actually go ahead and exit out of it. I'm not sure what happened there. I'm going to have to go back for a second here and disable this. Let's see, exit big picture. So once you've done that, your controller is actually going to work within the game, which is really great because it's actually probably one of the better ways to experience the game. Now you can um, still use your keyboard for those of you guys that have your keyboard working. Um, in my case, since the game seems to launch in desktop mode as well as in VR mode at the same time, which is an issue that I still haven't quite resolved, um, what ends up happening is that my keyboard decides to lag out and that's basically the end of it at that point. Um, it really kind of sucks, but you know, it is what it is. I, I can't really get around it um, too much. So now what we're going to do next, now that we have this thing up and running, is we're basically going to go into Alien Isolation, you're going to go to Properties, and you're going to want to set your launch options here. So what I did specifically was I set no intro, Steam VR, disable blinders, and no splash. Um, now, no intro and no splash. I don't know if um, you know one of them is the right one to use, but Steam VR basically tells the um, the application DLL that we put into the Aliens folder to launch it in Vive compatibility. And disable blinders means that you're not going to have any issues with the character poses freaking out when you end up going into a save station and so on. The developer is working on getting this resolved, but for now, it is what it is. So you want to set those launch options. And then you're going to go back and hit play. Now, you may have some issues with NOLO in the beginning in terms of getting it to launch. Now, at this point, as you can see, you're just seeing a black screen, not ideal. But that's because, in my case, it launches into desktop mode. So what you want to do is you want to actually Alt-Tab and go into the VR headset. As you can see, now my head tracking is up and running. And I can also use my controller to play the game. So I'm going to go ahead and hit play here, and I'm going to say Alien Isolation and continue game. Now this part takes a little while. You will see that you kind of get kicked out into this little setting over here. If you're a NOLA VR user, then you want to set your height so that you're not sitting below floor level. Um, on HTC Vive, you guys may just want to consider giving it a reboot. But in general, this is basically what it's going to look like. Um, now again, my computer is not the best, and it's also running it in desktop mode, so you can see there are definitely a couple of issues with FPS, but for the most part, it runs pretty good. Um, you know, I, I, I found that the frame rate is satisfactory. You know, I'm not going to be getting the best frame rates out of this, but uh, it does work. Turning with the controller also works, but I find that because of the way that there's no, you know, teleporting in this game, it is kind of difficult to actually navigate the world. And uh, it just so happens that I get really motion sick whenever playing a game like this, um, just because the walking is very, um, very nauseating to me personally. So even though it works, um, I still need to find a different workaround for actually walking properly in the game. And I'll have a video on that in a little bit once I get that up and running. But I mean, as you can see, nothing fancy happening here. I am running the game. It looks absolutely stunning in VR. And, uh, you know, I, I figured it took me a really long time to get this setup going. And I thought it, you know, it only made sense to share with you guys exactly how to get this um, up and running because it is a great ton of fun, uh, basically running around and just messing around with stuff in VR. Also, the gun looks incredibly cool. Um, the tracker looks super cool. And I'm going to see if I can actually get the alien to come out here and uh, kill me while we're talking.
But basically, you know, this will get you up and running uh, depending on what platform you're using. You know, either it may be an Oculus platform, it may be the Rift platform. It, it doesn't really matter. The point is, you know, there is a lot of stuff that you can do as far as getting this set up. The Noel seems to work pretty good for me personally. Um, I'm going to go ahead and alt tab out of here and go back into PSVR settings here. But by and large, it works pretty well. I mean, the performance is definitely very satisfactory. If you have a really powerful card, then you're going to have no problems running this whatsoever. I have an R9390X in my machine. Um, again, it's not you know the latest piece of hardware. It's also not the fastest. But it does okay in this game. Um, I also um, forgot to mention that I'm actually running super sampling in this game on top of the um, other settings that I have set up. My base game runs at 1080p, but there is super sampling enabled for um, 1.2 times, I believe, at this point for me. You may want to play around with that. I find that the super sampling makes it look a little bit more, you know, crisp. It depends on, again, what headset you're using. If you're using a Pimax headset and a Nolo, um, then maybe the super sampling is not something you want to enable because it'll slag, you know, basically lag the game down quite significantly. But, um, you know, as it stands, it seems to me that uh, the game runs really well um, with no additional need for super sampling if your hardware can't take it. So hopefully this video helped you guys get the game up and running. Um, you know, I'm hoping that uh, you guys can enjoy it as much as I've been enjoying it, but maybe even more so because you probably don't get as nauseous as I do playing the game. And uh, I'll help you guys set up the walking simulation in the next video that I do, hopefully after this, in my VR series. So look out for that.